welfare check systems in place after revelations a woman was sleeping next to her brother's decomposing body for at least two years. Officials found floor-to-ceiling rubbish, rats as well as a skeleton in the government-owned Geelong flat. Health Minister Marianne Thomas says it wouldn't be appropriate to speculate while the coroner is investigating. This matter is currently under investigation. Of course, we do have systems in place to make sure that welfare checks are, are made appropriately on people who are vulnerable in our community. The widow of Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny has vowed to continue his work and fight for a free Russia. She's addressed European leaders accusing Russian President Vladimir Putin of killing her husband and hiding his body. The Lithuanian Foreign Minister Gabrielius Landburgis has told the BBC they need to launch sanctions. At the very least we should be talking about sanctions first of all. We did that in the past. It's a horrible reminder that every time an opposition member is killed in Russia, Europe had the uh, sanction packages. Now, I mean, it's, it's the very least that we could do and then demand a release of, of his body and a proper burial that his family and the people who trusted in him that they deserve. The Israeli cabinet has formally rejected what it called the unilateral recognition of Palestinian statehood. But the Jordanian Minister of Foreign Affairs, Ayman Safadi, says unless Israel recognises the state of Palestine, the current conflict in the occupied territories could worsen significantly. The whole world right now is saying the two-state solution is the only path forward. And Netanyahu is saying no. So I think it's time that the world made some tough decisions. Whoever is responsible for denying the peoples of the region, including Israelis, their right to live in peace must be held accountable. The West Bank is a powder keg waiting to explode and if that explodes, it's game over. Meantime, eight pro-Palestinian protesters have been arrested after spending the day on a roof in Melbourne's Outer East. Emergency services got the group down using a cherry picker. The protesters claimed the Bayswater engineering business was making parts for weapons bound for Israel. Sport and entertainment are next. In sport, the footy career of North Melbourne's Taron Thomas remains in limbo amid reports he's facing a lengthy suspension for his off-field behaviour. The AFL Integrity Commission continues to investigate allegations of inappropriate behaviour. It's been reported he could be sidelined for 18 weeks. And there's a push to relocate the Australian Institute of Sport to Brisbane ahead of the 2032 Olympics. An independent reviews recommended the AIS stay put in Canberra, but the full findings have yet to be released. In entertainment news, Kylie Minogue wowed the crowd at the People's Choice Awards in LA. She had them on their feet as she performed Padum Padum. She also discussed her recent Grammys win for Best Pop Dance Recording. I'm beyond stoked, yeah. It's, it's like a, it's a wild ride and I'm enjoying it. But, you know, when it's, it's kind of shining, it's awesome. I feel it and I'm aware of it and I'm thankful. And a London statue of Amy Winehouse has been defaced. A star of David Necklace on the statue was covered in a Palestinian flag sticker. It has since been removed and the matter referred to police. And that is the latest from the Nova podcast team. We'll see you later on for another update. I'm Susie Thompson.